Good afternoon. This is, <laughs> I've been running around all day, everybody. And some people probably say, well, why is she rushing? But I'm going to tell you some of the things that I'm experiencing in the spiritual realm. And it could be the natural overlapping. But the Bible tells us clearly that the flesh walls against the spirit. And when you purpose to do spiritual things, or like, for instance, read your Bible or pray, everything around you is going to try to uh, interfere with that. So with me ministering and, and God giving me a message in the morning, if it ain't the dog, if it ain't the husband, if it ain't the sons, it's something gump that's coming up to say, you're not going to go in that direction. And so, therefore, there is a spiritual warfare, but I'm just determined, y'all, to get on here and give, if it ain't but a two minutes to share in the spiritual realm, because we are called to use our gifts to help edify. And so, this thought about um, where would we be if it wasn't for the Lord, which is the part one of this particular tape. I did it this morning. And what it was coming to mind was the fact that when we are saved and, and filled with the Holy Spirit, we are now light because before our salvation, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we were walking in darkness, which is scripture. We were all walking in darkness after the course of this world. And then Jesus himself came in. First, he brought the Holy Spirit brought us to the place of repentance because the Holy Spirit job is to reprove, uh, reprove the world of sin of righteousness and judgment. So he reproved me. He's bringing us to a place of repentance. That's what we talked about. We was talking about the, um, once you receive Christ and Christ is now inside of you, he gives us, as we learned this morning in tape number one, about the Beatitudes, that kind of attitude that we should have. And that stood out to me when I first got saved uh, about the, the Beatitudes was one of the first things the Lord began to uh, help me to change my attitude. And I was talking about somebody slap you on one side and turn the other side. And I was reading that. <laughs> I'm like, really? For real? But it's, it's, see, God's word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, it is there to help us change, help us to be transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, which is scripture. So I think sometime I'm just going to give you what is coming to my mind. And I, it's imperative that we talk to each other about these things as a members of the body of Christ. And so I had a whole lot. You see, I'm all, all over the place. I've been cooking and cleaning and carrying on. I'm like, Jesus. I was telling, but anyway, I'm going off on my own, on my own personal thing. Let's stay on the, on the course. The course is we're staying in light of what God has given me. And what he's given to me, which I know he's not just giving it to me. He gave it to everybody in the body. But every part of the body, when we used to have the time we call testimony, it's because the testimonies testify of what God is doing in that person's life, wherever they may be. They may be in a family, as I told you this morning, who the first person that the light came on. They and then they having a problem. In fact, we learned when we first got saved, some people had a problem to get out the door to get to church. You know, the husband or somebody was, I mean, some people was actually physically attacked because they were trying to go to church. Okay, so that's what the Lord wants us to remember that we are in, once we receive Christ, we are no longer of the world and therefore that you can expect opposition. And then he tells us in the scripture, don't think it, um, that these things are happening to us, but it's common. The things that happen to all the people in the body of Christ, when you turn on the light, then there's something you're going to have. In fact, Jesus told us clearly, don't think that I came to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. And a man's uh, enemy is going to be in their own house. And what it is, is they're still not converted yet. Some people in your family may not be converted. They're still in darkness. And it clearly declares in the words, when they are still in this darkness, they're still subject to the enemy. In fact, he says, um, his will they would do. So until they have be, are taken out or ransom out of the hand of the enemy, then we know that we have to be mindful of it. And then once you begin to take on the attitude that I'm going to teach, I'm going to preach, I'm, a, I'm going to pass out tracts, I'm going to the hospital, I'm going, and then what's Matthew's, the fifth chapter, talking about letting your light shine. First, it starts talking about the Beatitudes. So he knows when you go out, you're going to have issues. So we're going to read the B attitudes again. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about um, our position and our uh, purpose. And in, in the reason God allow us, as I was studying this here, um, 
God purposing some people to come in the world, like the woman who had, um, I think she was, uh, had, uh, was all bent over. And they said, and Jesus healed her. And they said, you healing her? He says, shouldn't I uh, heal this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has, has uh, afflicted? So I begin to think about how many times God allow his people to come under the power of the enemy. And I was like, you know, which we know clearly Jesus told us that I will be handed over into the hands of sinful men, which made me go back and think about the children of Israel before they were even born. God told Abraham, they're going to be down in Egypt and they're going to be afflicted. And we're like, Lord, what is all this affliction about? What, what is the necessity which God tells us? His ways are not like our ways, neither his thoughts like our thoughts. Even when we look at this, our uh, brother Job, clearly the, 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 the uh, conflict came when God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Oh, yeah, but you got a hedge about him, which we talked about the other day. The hedge is the wall of salvation. And we saw it in Israel talk about he had hedged in his garden. He had hedged it, but then he said, I'm going to take the hedges down and let the people come in and trample all over it. This is mind boggling because we know God's ways are not like our ways. So we think about, uh, as I was thinking about um, uh, the woman of God, Terry, which is our family member, how just working and laboring for Lord, laboring for God. And then the time come of, we talked the other day about season and times of testing. When, what will you do in the day when you're reproved or when you're tested, when God tests the vessel, when he tests to see uh, uh, whether or not, as they said, um, he, like for instance, Job, he said, I know Job will not deny me. I did. So now we may not understand this, 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 um, this position where God is a, allows to any, but, but it's all through the scriptures where they are come up and they are tested. He, in fact, he said to us when he took him, he said, I would take him right into the promised land, but they won't, they don't know war. Since they don't know war, then I got to take him through the, to the, the wilderness to prove them. Because he said he, he would have taken him right in to, to deal with the enemy. He said, but they, they don't know war. So God takes us through the war. And what is our warfare now? It's not carnal. Okay. Because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. So he, our warfare not carnal, but a mighty through God. So God, just like he told the children of Israel, they couldn't go right in yet because they couldn't deal with war. The God, they had to, God had to prove them whether or not. And you saw how many people was lost in the wilderness before they even attempt to go across the Jordan. They come to the Red Sea together. But when they get ready to go across the Jordan, God had already said from 20 years old and up, they're not going because of their faith. So in order to go through the various fights and battles, you have to be a vessel that's already proven by God, which you see in the scriptures. And I thought about some of the people who say, well, why this coming upon me? Because God already trusts you with it. He already said, I'm going to bring you out. And clearly throughout the scriptures, that's what I got on this morning, talk about us being the light. And it says, if it wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you, Lord, you are awesome. And you talk about praising God through the times and just like he told the children of uh, Moses, I'm not going to take them in because they don't know more. So I got to prove them. So every time you see somebody go through something, because God already trusts them with it. He already know, like he said to, to the devil, said, I, I, this is my servant. And God already know what will happen. And through the test, and then clearly tells us, don't think it's strange. Think it not strange when these fiery trials come upon you. And those, but all it says, yielding a peaceable fruit of righteousness. Okay. So I'm just talking to you before I go to all these scriptures, because I think sometimes just sharing what the Lord is putting in my spirit. And I was over here. I have uh, four men in here and it's my husband. And then men don't always, you know, they're not, you know, they're not like us girls. You know, we just, ah, but men are not like that. A lot of times you do testosterone and they're like, you know, they don't want to, it's a bunch of stuff. And sometimes when I be trying to, 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 to study, Okay, one will be sitting down talking to me, and then that one will leave, and it's like they own, they punching the clock. That one leave, here come the other one. And they all got serious things to talk about. And I'm like, Lord, my the fruit of the Spirit is definitely being tried. My patience is being tried. 
<laughs> my long suffering. But he said the person who um uh, uh who the, the 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 servant of the Lord must be gentle and apt to teach and 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 be patient. That's the scripture. It, it, the, so you have to, in order for win these souls, because now the light is on in you. You are the light in your family. And these people, you're trying to get them to come to Christ because they're looking at you and reading you and, 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 and seeing what you go through. And then sometimes all four of them be looking at me like, <laughs> they be looking at me like, oh God. And I be saying, sometimes I just, I just, the Lord just come over me and I'm just, I just start singing a song. I said, Lord, I know that they are not the enemy, but the enemy doesn't want them to come to Christ. So God has put us as lights and salt, which is Matthew's the fifth chapter. You are light and salt in your job. You're light and salt down in, in the supermarket. And, and the people decide, but well, we, we're not going to be nice to you. That's why he said, everything we go, say, Lord, I'm getting ready to go to the supermarket. I need you to help me in the supermarket because you encounter, because the light of Christ in you, you're going to encounter all kinds of warfare. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes I'm telling you, this YouTube channel, which is my, I mean, God knows I love his word and I love doing the work. You know, when I was doing the Bible school, sometimes I would be crying on the way to the Bible school because of the warfare prior to getting to the school. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, I don't think I can take this job. But God called us. He said he already know that we can do it. And the more that he, I told you, the more he gives us, the more, the more we desire and he gives us, he's going to increase it. So I know the servants of God who was in God. Um, we was talking about um, Terry. Uh, so many people are watching how she comes through. You know, when I got cancer, people were saying, you don't act like you had cancer and they don't cut off your breasts. And, they don't, and you don't act like it. Because, see, it's not our spirit. That is under attack. Our spirit is in Christ. Our spirit is in God. God is the keeper of our souls. Hallelujah. But the web warfare comes when the flesh is warring against the spirit. So the enemy wants to move you from, from rejoicing and praising God and magnifying God and, and giving him the pro glory to coming into the flesh. And so <laughs> to provoke you to do. And I'll tell you, I told this testimony before I was laboring with, uh, the hospital, uh, the Bible school, the nursing home on Sunday ministering. And then I was in Hartsville, South Carolina. And then I, I was my, for some reason, my son and I, we was not together. I said, I got to, to break away from this and go and see him. And I was physically exhausted. I was spiritually drained. I mean, I was, because you go to a nursing home every week laying hands and then you go to hospitals laying hands and then you go and and you preaching the uh teaching the gospel every week and continue to do that and then you on sunday you lay in hand oh you're gonna be emptying yourself out <laughs> you're gonna be emptying yourself out and then you who i mean at that time I was like but who, who gonna even concern about me that's why the lord said to me who yoked you to all of this see god will give us work to do but because of our title and we're not really understanding the when they talk about weight on our ministry, Lord, where would you have me to go? What would you have me to do to understand that God is the one that has to direct you? But because you got the title now, you are ready to run every place somebody said to go. You like going in 10 direction and that will wear you out. Thank you, Jesus. It will wear you out. And I'm telling you this because some people, when you get ordained, you have to be careful then and make sure, Lord, this is your will. Just because people are telling you to go, doesn't mean you need to go. Be yes, there's there's work out there, and then overzealous. When you get ready to go somewhere, you just overzealous, and I'm going, and um. Uh, but believe me, but the the attack comes, and you have to. And I learned that through the hard way, y'all, because God told me, believe me, uh, the couple of times between I can all them things I'm named, all them was doing. I mean for. Three and four and five years just doing it. Then I came to another church and still laboring. But I said, you know what? I will never spread myself that thin anymore. I will never spread myself out every direction. I've learned. And now the Lord has blessed me with the YouTube. I'm excited about the YouTube. We have a person on here who is dealing with science. And he doesn't understand the scriptures. He doesn't understand God. He doesn't understand the soul. He's dealing with science. And we have Jewish. And we have Muslim. And we have everybody. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Because eventually all of us is going to come before the living God. You know, some people here don't even believe in the living God. But, but 
listen, as a human being, I'm telling you, and, and the reason that God takes us through things that we ourselves personally know that God is real, because you're going to meet people who don't know him, who don't even believe like one man was saying on the YouTube about science, you know, and I'm like, Lord, you know, you said your word that sometimes you will answer them. So please answer that soul. He will not find you if you don't see, if you don't draw, draw him near to you. He will not find you. So I'm praying for, uh, we're praying for each other, especially those who know, who are determined, say, I know there is a true and living God. Then we extend in God will reveal to us the way, the truth, and the life, how to come to him. I'm trusting God through everything. Even when I see over here with this, um, I won't even name everything that's going on, y'all. But it's definitely spiritual warfare. And then the Lord kept saying, at one point I was today, I said, I got to go outside. I got to go get in my car and sit down and pray. <laughs> I'm going to pray outside, Lord. But God took, got me back in the right mindset. That's why he said, the be attitudes. He talk them out. Uh, blessed are, and when you read the be attitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, uh, the merciful. You got to be merciful to some people because... Uh, and it, you, there's a whole running the reference for all of the merciful. I had put down Psalms 8, 25. So I had f taken the various things that he's saying, the, the, the kind of attitude we should be in, which is a whole different study. Just taking the, the Beatitudes and taking about the merciful, uh, those who mourn, uh, those who are meek. All this is a study to understand what kind of person, uh, uh, spirit we are supposed to have. Okay, the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount, okay? Uh, and so I learned that, and that's some, this last uh, couple of days, the Lord had put in me about our light. You know, uh, the light set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do people light a candle and place it under bu uh, a bushel. So he doesn't want our light to be hid because you may be the only light. Just say if he says the church is speaking to principality, the church is speaking to powers, which we learn in Ephesians 2nd, 3rd, and 4th chapter, that, that's, that for the intent of God's manifold wisdom would be, uh, 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 um, the, what say displayed, will, will be made evident to principalities and powers because what God is doing in the word. And so we, the church is like Job. It's like God is saying, you see all these souls, I'm cutting them on him, cutting them on there, turn the light on him, translating them there, translating him, I'm working. <laughs> and we can be a witness and say, God truly has worked in my life. There ain't no doubt that Christ has been in, uh, has moved in my life through miracles and signs and wonders and healings and, and things, bringing us to. And then I remind, went back to the prophet, Elijah. And he said, I don't dealt with all these 400 some of Baal, of prophets of, of Jezebel and, and prophets of Baal. And, he, and then now Jezebel sends him a word. Well, you're going to be just like them men because you're going to be. So she threatened him and he went to the cage and God sent the angel to encourage his servant and sent it because the man was getting listen. When you warring and warring in the spirit realm, not just against people. But you're warring against principalities and wickedness and rules of doctrine and then yourself. Even when you go to sleep, Lord, cover me when I'm sleeping. Because all of this is warfare, which the church, according to the scriptures, is specifically for the intent of principalities and powers to make known the power of God. That's the whole. So everybody who's actually in the body of Christ is going through warfare. That's why I said, uh, what shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate you? Who shall separate you from the love of God? That's why they said, wasn't for your love, wasn't for your grace. And that's what Paul, the apostle Paul, who had a thorn in his side, he said, God sent a messenger of Satan to buffer him, lest he become exalted. So if it wasn't for God's love, wasn't for his grace. And Paul said, God answered Paul and said, uh-uh. He said, my grace is sufficient because he wanted that thorn removed from him. He said, take this thing from me. And he said, God sent a messenger of Satan. So we may not understand why uh, God is, is, is even dealing in that realm, what his intentions are. And in my mind always, and I may be off course, but I always think that when heaven lost a third of God's angels, God, the heaven is not going to be without Hallelujah. Praises and worshipers. And God, I believe we were placing 
<laughs> all on angels because heaven is not going to be short on anything. It's not going to be short on anything because it's the presence of God. So all them uh, angels that was cast out, God said, I'm going to feel, see, I mean, only this is about understanding. God forgive me if I'm wrong. That I, didn't, I always say God is not going to become short because somebody takes something from you. You're like, oh, no, no. Look at Job. You took what he took from him. God restored that thing. And every time he said that you lose anything, I'm going to restore it a hundredfold. God is not going to have us short in anything or missing. He's not going to be missing anything either. So, therefore, he is restoring, replenishing, uh, uh, talking about what the canker worm, the palmer worm has eaten. God is going to restore it. So, I believe God to God of restoration and the restore of found foundations, of, of many foundations that this is what's doing. And that's why we who have the light of God, which the spirit of God in us, goes through things, trying, talking about being tested and, and, on, and talking about being laid upon that precious stone, the chief cornerstone. And this spiritual house is going to be a tested house. Nobody in, in the body of Christ who will be laid upon the foundation stone, which is Christ, will not be tested. Now, many times and through many trials and many tribulations and through various things as he took the children of Israel to prove them. Now, I'm going to go back and listen to this tape, y'all, to get the scriptures <laughs> that the Lord is putting in my heart. But it, it's to encourage you. Whatever you may be going through, God is there with you. Like the Hebrew boy in the fire, referring, he was right there with them. And Daniel in the lie, he shut up the mouth. So God is, is in charge of our lives. He is ordering our steps. And a lot of times, as the children of Israel said, you have caused men to ride over our head. Thank you, Jesus. And because he had taken the hedge down off them, he said, I have hedged them in, but I'm going to remove the hedge from them. And we know what he walls us in is salvation and the gates of praise. So, this is what I'm thinking. And this season time, whenever, that's why I thank God we need to be able to pray for one another. If you're going through a trial and tribulation, you do, because the body of Christ is, is, is not in this country, that country. It is all over because the spirit of God is one. God is one. One faith, one baptism, one Lord. We are one in, Christ, in God. And we're seated in heavenly places. So this is to encourage anyone if they're going through trials and tribulation. Just put in there, let's pray. Because if we recognize that we are not separate, even though we're in different bodies, but in the body of Christ, there is no division. There is no separation. And so, just telling you, it's warfare. And I get on here sometimes quickly because it depends on what the warfare is. And the warfare is coming to steal your joy, your peace, your confidence, your faith. What am I going through all of this for? I'm going. See. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life. So now we are dead in Christ, buried with Christ. Okay. Our, and even though we're walking around, okay, but in the spiritual realm, uh, we have been born again. We have died in Christ and been risen. That's what the baptism is. The baptism is you're buried and then you're rising again. So that baptism of the Holy Spirit is Christ gives it to us and we're baptized in the water and we come up as new creatures walking in the newness of life. That's what the scriptures say. And that's what you got to realize. And a lot of time when you go through, God has said to and I was going to take about um, uh, Christ died according to the scriptures. And there was one particular scripture that said, uh, some vessels of honor where unto they were appointed. So some people are appointed to different different things in God's plan. That's why it says God's uh, thoughts are not like ours. Neither are his ways. Uh, uh, no one can find out his ways. What's he's doing? All we got to do is trust him. Okay. And trust him with ourselves. And so we're going to close out. I will look and see what scriptures I've been saying. And then we are going to... Um, Continue and, and well, one thing he said: commit ourselves to the conscience of all men. That's what he told me. Um, I'm going to go to in Corinthians. We'll close out with some scripture, but I'm going to go back and listen to this YouTube so I can put all the scriptures that the Lord has put on me. But I wanted to encourage the body of Christ and believers that first of all, we are not divided. Okay, don't even get that thought. We are not divided. 
Because the body of Christ is not divided. If you have been baptized into the body of Christ, you are not divided. Wherever you are, just somebody say, you're a believer, born again, a believer, let's pray. And then you get people to join hands with you in, or or whatever way. You know, they sometimes uh, don't have to physically be there. You're standing in agreement for this. I'm believing God for this is what I'm believing him for. If you don't want to go through the details, say, I need God to move in this situation, in my family, in my life, in my finances, whatever. I need. You have to be connected to somebody. Don't be a sheep that's out there by yourself, okay? I'm not here by myself, and I'm carrying this here, and never mind, because you are baptized into one body by one spirit, so you're never alone. You got to have somebody stay. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000. Imagine if you get a whole group of people who are in the body of Christ. They're going to put a lot of things to flight. Okay. So you need to not say um, this out here by myself. You're not by yourself. Okay. Uh, Second Corinthians 13. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So that's what Paul closed out to say. That was the closing thing. But I wanted to read um, also the second chapter. This is to encourage you. Do not stay out there and say it's just me. It's I'm all like the prophet said. Is I'm, I'm, I'm the only one. I'm the only one left. Everybody else went bow to bail. Okay. Um, and it says here... Um, because we talk about us. But it said, The natural man received not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And the reason I came up with that, because I said a lot of people who are preaching the gospel and te te teaching the scriptures don't have the Spirit of God. He said, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. As a believer and a baptized, we have the mind of Christ seeing things from, and God wants us to have our mind transformed so we can understand that this is a spiritual thing. Regardless of where we are, we are not, if the person is in the body of Christ, don't think, well, I, I, I'm not going to talk to this person. Come together with the mindset of doing the work of God and ca and dealing with these here, one putting a thousand to flight. Say, listen. All of you who have the Holy Ghost, this is a situation we all need to pray for it, okay? We all need to come together in this congregation and pray. Spirit-filled believers, pray. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, don't pretend. Just, just sit down and, and God will, will bring, bring you through. But if you know you got the Holy Ghost, let's pray for this situation. And pray God's will in this area and this season and this time. Now, we can all agree on that, right? Okay. All right. Because we have the mind of Christ. And what was the mind of Christ? Christ said, I do always those things that please my father. Oh, when I saw that you have the mind of Christ, Christ said, I do always those things that please his father. He did always those things. That's another scripture too. So we go always do the things that please God. So now we're going to close out. And uh, if it wasn't for his love and it wasn't for his grace and the fact that we are one. We are one and we have been told we are the light. You are at the first YouTube, I told you you're the light and the salt, okay? And you may be the light in your house, the only one. When you come to church, stand with somebody and say, listen, I am in warfare uh, 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 in my family, and we pray for your strength. They said, when the preacher said, come up, you know, they used to say, anybody come up to the altar and pray. Because, see, sometimes people come in empty. They'd have been in warfare all day in their family, in their job and place. And then they come to church. Then they feel, but the only invitation is the people who want to first. Get. No, come and say, you need strength. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray for you. Let us anoint you. Let us, uh, uh, so that you can go back and, and God can fill you again. One baptism, many feelings. Okay, we got to get this stuff together. But well, we're going to close out now, okay? Father, we thank and praise you. Thank you for this time. I had a chance to share what you put on my heart. And I pray it would go out and accomplish what you sent it out to do. And throughout the household of faith, wherever my sisters and brothers are, are Lord God, in Venezuela, and in and, and Africa, from they're coming from Africa, they're coming from the Ukraine, 
Ukraine. They're coming from all over, Lord God. They're coming from America. Wherever they're coming from, Lord, they are one in you. My God, they have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ is not divided. You are the head, and we thank and praise you for sending them strength. Sabaka, giving them, oh God, hallelujah, uh, the grace that they need to abound in the work that you have called them to do. God, make back, oh she, Lord, let your angels encamp about them, God. We thank you for making provisions for them, opening up doors for them, God, strengthening them in the inner man, Father, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we continue to yield our body. And so as the times, oh God, grow darker, we pray that the light of Christ, oh God, will shine bright and your vessels wherever they may be. My God, we thank you and praise you for keeping them under the shelter of your wings, for the, the word declared that we're in your hand and can nobody take us out. We commit ourselves into your hands and count it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So besides physical attacks, you know, you have family attacks, you have uh, uh, all bunch of stuff, okay? But the Lord wanted me to share this here. So this is tape number two. The first one was this morning with the same little outfit on y'all because I've been running around all day and a couple of times I had to go out and get my car. So I got to go outside of here. <laughs> I got to go outside because it's getting to be too much. But God tells us clearly, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. If you don't have to go out, like one, um, uh, uh, Deborah, and um, uh, her name is Deborah Perry, and she's an evangelist. And she used to tell me, she said, go in your your bathroom and close the door and tell them they can't. You ain't tell them you in the bathroom and pray. You know, I, I haven't talked to Deborah for years, but wherever she is, she's truly a woman of God. And she would say, just go in your bathroom and pray. So you find people who, who understand the warfare as you're growing up. They tell you what to do. Go in the bathroom, close the door. Says, I'm in here. And I'm just in here talking to Jesus. And, and, and because you're not going to be without warfare. And everybody is big. One thing, if everybody in your house was full of the Holy Ghost, but even among the disciples, Peter and Paul, P Paul had issues with Peter. He said, I confronted him. <laughs> so as long as we got on these earthly tabernacles, we're going to have some issues because the flesh is always one against the spirit. And Lord, help us be strong in you and not let the flesh rule over us, Lord. Not our flesh or nobody else's flesh, Lord. We ask your God for endure us with power that we might be true witnesses in this season and time that your word will go forth into the ears of the hearers, into the hearts of believers, converting them, translating them from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light as we commit ourselves into your hands and we count it done. Amen. So I had to get on here. That's it. And I just want you to continue and encourage somebody to come along. Push the like button. This is part two of the first one. Okay. And the first one is um, the love, God's love and grace. And you are the salt and the light. Okay, now we've got to figure out what we're going to name this one. Probably naming some of the same thing. But anyway, please continue to pray for me. Because sometimes as we get closer in, 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 in the, uh, the adversary, know uh, those people who are working. you got to pray for the laborers. Pray for laborers. Not just some to come in, but the labor, people who are really laboring. you got to pray for them people. Because they come under attack. And they should not feel like they're out there by themselves, like Elisha. They shouldn't feel like I'm the only one. Okay, Mother Allen is praying. You pray for me and I'll pray for you, okay? And God, who he is, if two on earth will agree touching anything, and I told you, you can't be touching anything if you ain't touched with it. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to pray with them people. If, you ain't, if it ain't bothering you, we went through the other day. We said, go through the city and mock those who are weeping and moaning for the destruction and stuff that's going on. People who are concerned about what's going on, put, a, put my mark, God said, on them. Okay, and then after that, let the destroyer go through and kill everybody else. That's what the scripture said. This is another YouTube. We just did that one, okay? Please continue to pray. We are in a warfare, and I pray that we do not faint. And Paul says some people faint is shipwreck, and some people faint it from what's going on. And I pray that we don't have a shipwreck with a bow faith or faint, okay, regardless of how severe the storm is. Please continue to pray for me. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you all over. Anybody who touched my life, Lord, put it in my mind, and I'm down in there. I said, Lord, you know them. You know what's going on in their lives. And you have begun to work in here, in them, and you will perform it. Because God said he will not leave us, nor forsake us. Okay? And I believe that. I believe it. Even though it may get hard, sometimes you think, oh, I'm the only one going through. But you're not the only one through. And God's work is still continuing. God is always going to have himself a witness. Not now. He got plenty of witness all over the world. And even some, and, well, and we're going off a little bit more. Please push the like button and continue to follow. Stay in your Bible and talk with the Lord. 
and continue to commune with him by his spirit, okay? And your spirit together. In Jesus' name, be blessed.